Day 7. Not nay. The next morning was overcast and damp. The kids found themselves behind a lake so big they could barely see to the other side. Ah, looks like Knock Nay. It is the largest lake on the island, stated the Wolfhound, in response to their unasked question. It has enough water to fill seven million swimming pools. Legend states that the hero Fionn McCool scooped it out when he was chasing the Scottish giant. And he threw it into the sea and created an island called the Isle of Man. Is that the same Fionn that used the cave we were in, asked Robert? The very one. The lake was actually formed when the crust of the earth split. An area sunk, creating a lake. Here I will show you on the map. That looks like a mallard duck. Like we have back home, interrupted James. You are right, said the wolfhound approvingly. Are there any ragged robins around here? asked Susan. Not here by the shore. Ragged robins grow in marshes or boglands, replied the wolfhound. Then why are we here? asked Robin. And what's a bogland? asked James. A bogland is a very special place that took thousands of years to create, answered the wolfhound. Here we have peat bogs and lots of different plants make them their home. Humans dig peat for fuel. The wolfhound cocked his head, sniffed in the air, then licked his lips. With a wolfish grin he said, fish, and trotted off towards the boat. The kids looked in their travel bags and sure enough, there were some fishing poles. They followed the wolfhound onto the boat and into the lake. After some frustrating moments, they all settled into fish. Robert caught the first one. Mmm, said the wolfhound, licking his lips. This is a salmon. Good eat. Why is a salmon in a lake? asked Susan. I thought they were in streams. It was hard for the wolfhound to stop looking at the salmon. Finally, he replied. Salmon come from the sea and up the rivers to lay eggs. Some make it all the way to the lakes. And we have cold water here, so the salmon is going to be tasty. About five minutes later, Jane caught a fish. What is this? she asked. Oh, this is a Poland fish. It is a yummy white fish, and this is the only lake in Ireland where it is abundant. His large mouth opened as if he couldn't help himself to take a bite. Just then, James caught one, but struggled to pull it in. He had to have help. Susan stopped her fishing to help them. When they finally got the fish on the boat, it was about 20 pounds. Wow, said the wolfhound. You two are very lucky. Usually you only catch it all again in the dark. And we are all lucky because we have lots to eat besides travel bars, said Susan happily. After eating, they looked at the map and the wolfhound showed them where they were. This time, a soppy wet paw print was left. James closed his eyes and shook his head. It was no use. As amazing as the wolfhound was, he just couldn't seem to figure out that James wanted to keep a clean map. We are in the province of Ulster, at the top of the Ireland. They followed natural paths, the wolfhound said, were made by animals to get to the lake. While they were walking, Jane asked the wolfhound what a ragged robin looked like. It has very narrow petals, and it looks raggedy. What color is it? asked Jane. Mmm, sort of bluish grayish, answered the wolfhound. Blue gray, asked Susan. Instead of answering, the wolfhound continued. It used to be very common, but humans have drained many of the marshes and wetlands to make way for pastures. We don't see as many anymore. What do marshes have to do with ragged robins? asked James. Ragged robins need boggy ground to grow, replied the wolfhound. Then let's hope the fairies will send us there, said Susan brightly. They always have, said the wolfhound, as he sat on his haunches. The kids had not been paying attention where they were going. Looking around them at their feet, they noticed it was a bit muddy in places. Ooh, whined Susan. My shoes are all dirty. Sure is squishy here, said Robert with delight. Yes, there are wetlands around the lake. Be on the lookout for your ragged robin. They have five spiky grayish petals. 
I will wait here. It did not take them long, but instead of being blue, blue gray, the ones they found were a bright pink. They brought some samples back to the wolfhound to see. After sniffing, the wolfhound confirmed they were indeed ragged robins. But these are pink, not blue gray, said Jane. Are you sure these are the right ones? Of course, my nose never lies. Jane considered the wolfhound. I don't think you see color the way we do. James carefully picked three ragged robins and pressed them in the pages of his journal. Cool, exclaimed Robert. We only have two more things to collect. Susan looked at the fragile flower. Is this used for anything? She asked the wolfhound. Yes, the root is used as a soap for washing clothes, the flower as a hair rinse. The wolfhound sniffed in the direction, then sneezed. In fact, you all need your clothes washed, and for that matter, another bath. Let's dig up more of these flowers and get you and your clothes clean. But it's cold and wet, complained Susan. The wolfhound sniffed the air. Not for much longer. The sun will come out long enough to warm you and dry your clothes. They spent the rest of the morning digging up ragged robins. By the time they had enough plant roots to wash their clothes, the sun had come out. While waiting for the clothes to dry, the kids chatted about what was left to find. We still need to find the wood for the black dawn staff, stated Robert, and the location of the, hexag the hexagon rock, said Susan. Is that really all we need now, asked Jane? Yes, answered James, just two more items. After lunch, the clothes were dry and they headed on their way. Just as the wolfhound predicted, as soon as their clothes were dry, the skies clouded and a soft rain began to fall. Not the first time the children were grateful for the raincoats found in their packs. That afternoon, they came across some hedges separating two fields from each other. Hmm, this looks familiar, mused James. It should be, said the wolfhound. This is your blackthorn. But it doesn't have any flowers, cried Jane. They do not bloom all the time. Flowers turn into dark berries. Look at those black thorns. This is your wood, all right. All the kids were skeptical and leery at the sharp thorns. Well, said the wolfhound, go get cutting. With what? exclaimed Robert. How do we get past those really sharp thorns? I will leave you to it, said the wolfhound. Almost as an afterthought, he added, Make sure to cut a very thick branch, as this is for a shalala. Better yet, dig up the whole thing. The best shalalas are made from the root. Then he trotted off, laying down the only sun patch, and promptly fell asleep. Later that night at camp, the children were quiet. What's up? asked the wolfhound. Why so glum? We didn't get the blackthorn wood sighed Susan. Why not? We didn't have anything to cut with, said Robert, or to dig it up. All we got was dirty, pumped Susan. And even if we did, added Jane, a mean dog snarled at us, as if he knew we were going to cut down part of his hedge. Now we are never going to get home. We don't even know what a shillelagh is, said the defeated James. Just when the children thought the wolfhound would not answer, he said, Shalala is a walking stick on sight with so much more. It settled disputes in a gentlemanly manner. How can a stick settle a dispute? asked Robert. It's not just a stick, although it starts out with one. It was also a weapon. A duel with them settled disputes like one with pistols or swords. The kids settled in with their sleeping bags to listen. They started with a big sturdy branch. Some people would hollow out the heavy end and fill it with lead or metal to make it even a better weapon. They were so good, the English banned them when they occupied Ireland, so the Irish made them into walking sticks. The English could hardly deny them that. To make the shillelagh beautiful and hardy, people placed the wood up chimneys for several months or even years. Then, once cured, finished with oils. Wait, said Robert, shaking his head. Wouldn't it burn? The wood was not near the fire, replied the wolfhound, but up the chimney. The smoke dried out the wood, and it would accumulate layers of soot, give it a dark, black appearance. 
There is more to the creation of a shilela than a simple walking stick. There is more to each of you as well. Some things take time and patience. Have some faith in your abilities and in your creativity. You will have, you will find a way to get the black home stick. But the next morning found them in a new place with not a black home tree in sight.